Greetings AMC here, it's John Campy here, uh, AMC Movie News, here at the beautiful Burbank 16 uh, in Burbank, California, here on the opening weekend of the Avengers, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Mr. Clark Gregg, star of the oh, Avengers. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Clark. This, is, this has been such a fun night already, and, and I gotta ask you, you know, we're now here at the Avengers. You introduced everybody to the idea of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the first Iron Man, and now we've come to the Avengers, finally. Tell us what this whole journey's been like for you and what it's like to finally reach this pinnacle. Um, you know, I, I grew up reading these comics, and I was I thought I was a geek till I started going to Comic-Con and found out what real <laughs> geeks are. But uh, I, I loved the Marvel Universe. I loved Tony Stark. That was, that was one of the ones I really loved. And so when Jon Favreau called up and said, you know, I got this part. It's, you know, there's nothing much there, but... You know, who knows? And I said, yeah, who knows? <laughs> I've done this before. <laughs> who knows means it'll get cut out. And, and I took the gig because I loved him and, and Gwyneth and Robert. I, I, I'm such a fan. And, uh, and uh, then they just started adding more stuff. And one of the things they added was that the, the group that I claimed to work for was the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. And I'm enough of a geek that I thought, oh, no, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! That must mean. Could it possibly mean that I'm I'm Shield? And uh, when it got to that scene at the end, when I announced that that's what it is, I just I almost died a fanboy death right there. <laughs> and uh, and you know, to, it's just been a ridiculous kind of like fantasy island crazy thing where they just oh you're an Iron Man too yeah absolutely and I was doing a scene in Iron Man too and I said. Uh, they said they gave me a new line. Said, uh, "Tell him you got to go. Tell Tony Stark you got to go. You're gonna, you got to go to New Mexico." And I said it a couple of times, and I was like, "What? What's in New Mexico?" So they had told you at that point. No, no, everything's so top secret that at Marvel, I just I'm like, I don't even think they're gonna tell me, but I, I'm gonna ask anyway. What's in New Mexico? And then, and <laughs> Ludi Esposito, the producer, said, "Oh God, has nobody talked to you? <laughs> Thor, <laughs> Thor's in New Mexico. That's where the hammer is. You, you have a big part in Thor." Are you free? And I was like, well, <laughs> Let me think about I'm going to get free. And, um, and then at Comic-Con, Joss Whedon came up and introduced himself when I was about to do the panel for Thor and said, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I've been meaning to call you. You have a big part in, in the Avengers. Coulson has a big part in the Avengers. Can I introduce you as part of the cast? And I was like, I think I'm being really a mean trick is being played on me right now. And this, this is like someone's going to he's going to pull off his Joss <laughs> Whedon mask and be Tom Cruise or somebody. Um, or really Ashton Kutcher. And, um, <laughs> and uh, it all turned out to be true. And when I got the script for the Avengers, when I saw, you know, how much Joss had kind of taken the stuff that had been laid out already in the other movies about Coulson and S.H.I.E.L.D. and really developed it and expanded it and made him, like, you know, for my money, a really important part of, of the movie, again, I felt like this must be an awful prank, but it turned out to be true. And, you know, to see the movie come together the way the way it did and to have it be so funny and so much funny stuff gets you know Coulson gets to do and everybody gets to do and just to be part of a movie that really works and is so exciting and so fun for people you know and to be part of an ensemble like this mm. it's just one of the kind of highlights you know it's funny one of the reasons I love uh, Phil so much in these movies because on the one hand he's a lot like us he's this at his the deepest core of his being he's kind of a geek he's kind of this guy but at the same time in Iron Man 2 he has this conversation with Tony where he gives him a little bit of a veiled threat and you think underneath the surface this guy is a legitimate badass and could probably do some damage all at the same time how did you look at Agent Coulson well it's been it's kind of been one of the funnest things about it is that every you know every time they do a new installment, there'd be a new writer director and I'd get mm. to find out something else. And I mean, even I think from the early scenes, I'm, I was, you know, kind of an annoying bureaucrat just showing up trying to get a, get a meeting with Tony Stark, you know, and then it turns out, well, that's actually kind of his cover. Mm. And pretty soon he's kind of with Pepper Potts placing an explosive going, you know, you might want to step back for a second. <laughs> and it turns out there's a little bit more going on with this guy. And then, you know, he has this kind of snarky but semi-subservient relationship with Tony Stark and Iron Man and then you know I think Tony Stark thinks he knows who Coulson is and is kind of playing some reindeer games in Iron Man 2 and and Coulson kind of just pulls the curtain back a little bit and says oh I will drop you yeah, I, I will so part. drop you and watch Super Nanny and uh, it's a favorite line uh, of the fans I, it gets quoted to me a lot and uh, a great line that Justin Theroux wrote um, and uh, 
you know, the Avengers certainly, in a couple of directions, carries that on. You know, it really kind of shows you how committed he is to all this and for all his sarcasm and kind of jaded, you know, uh, feelings that he has toward the superheroes. I always thought it was a big, really revealing moment in Thor when this giant alien destroyer with the fire instead of a face shows up and Coulson's like, Oh, God, who's this guy? <laughs> you know, like another annoying alien. Um, so when, you know, Joss took the next step and really kind of reveals that in the world of the Avengers, Coulson grew up reading the comic books of Captain America, right. which in the world of the Avengers was based on this true World War II kind of superhero mm. who vanished. So, you know, and again, Joss really took advantage of what's there. The composer we've seen in three other movies from Phil Coulson goes right out the window <laughs> when he's actually, you know, given the job of escorting Captain America, his, his boyhood hero, to the helicarrier. You know, it, you know, we'll end with this. I think we all knew the Avengers was going to be big. I mean, we actually talked a little bit earlier. I said, yeah, I knew it was going to be big. I didn't dream it was going to be this, this big. We were at the Burbank 16 right now. I was here at 745 this morning. There were over 1,000 people in line outside. Theaters packed. 24 hours a day practically what's it like for you like were you anticipating it being this big and and what's it like for you when you walk into a theater now and you see the reaction you see the passion these fans have for this property it's amazing because you do you do this and you don't you almost don't get your hopes up there's so many things that can go wrong mm. there's so many things that have to come together in just the right mixture for a script to work for a cast to work for a movie to work and then you add you know the hulk and special effects and you hope it connects with people. You, you never, I don't think you can ever predict or ever, I don't think we ever imagined it would kind of take fire like this. And it's really, it's really amazing. And mm. it's, it's, I'm happy about it for myself and really for a lot of people, Kevin Feige and Jeremy Latcham and the people at Marvel who really started, you know, with Iron Man. And people forget Iron Man was not super, Superman or Spider-Man. Yeah. Not a lot of people really were like, Iron Man? Was that guy what was it a long time ago? And um, you know, Robert and Gwyneth and Jeff Bridges and you know, John Favreau, they really designed a new way of doing this that kind of took something that we've seen a lot of, superhero movies, and put something new in it. And the tone that they came up with a way that it could be really dramatic and have really kind of top tier actors in it and then be really funny. You know, and then to have Kenneth Branagh come in and really take it a different direction and somehow mm. keep it anchored to the same universe. Because Thor was so different. And I thought, well, Iron Man was cool. That's a cool suit. There's no way they're going to make this work with the guy with the hammer. And they pulled it off. <laughs> and then Caps in World War II. And how are they going to pull that off? And Joe Johnston did an amazing job there and made that movie work. And yet Marvel kept it in the same universe again. Right. And if any one of these movies had been a colossal bomb, I don't think anybody would have greenlit the Avengers, yeah. you know? And to have it come together like this. And it feels like uh, traveling around with it, They've done an amazing thing in that there's a lot of people who didn't read comics, but who invested in these other movies, and they're kind of fanboys and fangirls now. And you've got Scarlet, you know, not pretty wallpaper. She's as tough as anyone in the film. Yeah. She's as good as anybody in the movie. And my daughter was psyched to go see this for that reason. Right. And so there's just a lot of things that I think they've really gotten right. And to you know, be part of something that feels to me like how I felt when I saw Indiana Jones or, you know, The Matrix. It just, it's exciting. Well, Clark, congratulations on The Avengers, and thank you so much for the part that you played in bringing this movie to us. I said before, I said again, folks, this is the most fun I've ever had at a movie theater in my life. Congratulations on the film, and we can't wait to see you again. Thank you so much. Take care.